It seems appropriate to conclude our week uh, focusing on the kingdom, the power, and the glory belonging to God by finishing in the final book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. And Revelation, a great deal of it, is focused on the glory and the power and the kingdom of God. And if you look in chapters 4 and 5, for example, those two chapters are just a vision of the glory of God and of the Lamb. So the Bible would tell us that moving through the scriptures and moving through history, the ultimate destination is all creatures glorifying God. Uh, our verse for the day is Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. And this is part of the scene in heaven. And you have the living creatures who are giving glory and honor and thanks to the one who is seated on the throne. And you have the 24 elders who are there. And it's saying they cast their crowns before the throne singing. And that brings us to verse 11. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. So when we pray the Lord's Prayer, and we are praying for God's name to be hallowed, for God's will to be done on earth as it is already being done in heaven, we see that in heaven in Revelation that it's all about celebrating God's glory, the, the God who created the whole universe and every living creature, and that all those in heaven, every being that is in heaven, is praising God because God is worthy of glory and honor and power. And so as we think about our own prayer lives, as we think about our own lives, uh, if in heaven we're going to spend all our time giving glory and honor to God, then it's a good thing to start doing that now while we are here on earth. And that's what Jesus invites us to. That's what he's inviting his disciples to when he teaches them how to pray. He's teaching them to lead a God-centered life, a life that's founded upon a life-transforming relationship with the God who, as Revelation 4 says, created all things and by whom we exist. It's a life of dependence upon God who gives us our daily bread, who gives us forgiveness, who protects us and even delivers us from times of trial and tests and temptation, and a God who is perfect in love and grace and mercy and compassion and truth and holiness. And that God deserves all of our praise, all of our glory, and the devotion of our lives day by day. I hope that this six-week series on the Lord's Prayer has been a blessing to you. And I pray that you will continue to pray the Lord's Prayer on a daily basis and maybe even use some of the different versions that we've given you in the bulletins or you can find online. And may God be with you this day as you love and serve him.